So hello everyone, I'm here with our Duco trainer and jury and today we're going to be talking a little bit about um, ISO 13485, the quality management system for medical devices. So Anne, my first question to you then today is what is it? What is ISO 13485? Oh hi Alex. Um, ISO 13485 is a um, quality system standard so it provides, a, it's an international standard um, that it provides a framework for the um, development and manufacture of medical devices. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And for those who are starting out from scratch and are looking to implement this this quality management system, what um, you know? How do they do it? What should they do? What should their steps be? So it's. Um, uh, I probably should have said it's a. a a standard providing a framework within which you can implement something called the quality management system. Um, and as the name would imply, it is um, intended to, to give a, a system of processes that will allow you to create and develop medical devices and manufacture them in a consistent manner. The idea behind most standards is that we get consistency of output from something or, or a consistent approach to something. Um, so if you're a startup company, uh, you need, first of all, to sit down and think about what you are there to do. What is your raison d'etre, so to speak? And uh, that when I have implemented quality systems, quality management systems with startup companies, the very first thing you need to do is document management, management because you can't even write a product specification or um, a, a manufacturing procedure until you've determined how you're going to manage the documentation. Because one of the biggest kind of potholes or pitfalls of quality systems is using the wrong document. So using last week's instead of this week's. And then, you know, you get into difficulties. So it's really important to have a document control process. And so that's the first one to write. And then everything after that is produced, every document is produced in a consistent manner. Everyone understands it has a format and a look to it that um, people understand and know how to use. And then from there, if you're, um, whether you're developing products or, or, or straightforwardly manufacturing them, you need to control the materials. Um, well, two things, the resources of the company, and the materials that you're going to use in your product. So there's a whole section on resource management and um, a section on, which is called product realization. And that is um, a bit of a confusing title, but meaning from concept to retirement, it covers the whole product life cycle. So those two areas, once you've done your document control, do your, um, control of materials, so that includes purchasing and how you interface with suppliers and then your product realisation, which is how you do what you're doing. Thank you, Anne. And a question that I've just sort of thought of actually going back a step is what what are the key differences between um, 13485 and 9001? Ah, OK, good question. So ISO 9001 is a similar parallel standard for all industries. It's not specific to one industry. And the nature of development of standards means that they, once they're written, they, they have a period of validity and then they get revised if needed. And ISO 9001 was revised in 2015, at least the, the, its current published version was 2015, and ISO 13485 was 2016 and the two committees don't work together. So 13485 is specific to medical devices. And at that point they diverged slightly. So ISO 9001, in my opinion, is a slightly more forward thinking, flexible standard that's intended for use by all sorts of industries. And medical devices um, 13485 was very much a standard for quality systems to meet regulatory requirements. So the difference is 9001 can be applied to anything, anywhere, any kind of company, but perhaps the basis for those which are working in non-regulated industries. And 13485 is 
specifically for medical devices which have their regulations in many territories. So it's not specific to Europe or UK or, or anywhere in particular. Um, and uh, so, so the content differences come down to things like, uh, there is greater attention to things like product identification and traceability. Uh, there's more attention to um, uh, documenting things which under 9001, perhaps you don't need to document quite as much because there isn't that need to demonstrate to a regulator. I would say in a nutshell, that's the sort of differences. Brilliant, thank you. That's good. I think that's a good, uh, good, good, uh, good answer and a good, good um, comparison. And so, my next question, then, Anne, is for those companies or professionals that are working in an established thirteen four eight five system, what would be their issues or kind of issues that they face, or um, regarding this, yeah, regarding this quality management system? Uh, interesting. So now, as I said, ISO thirteen four eight five was published in twenty sixteen. Um, there was an amendment <clears throat> published or a, an addendum uh, in 2021, but all that does, it doesn't change the content of the standard. It merely added some pages which show how it um, meets the intentions of the regulations. So regulations never specify a standard. The regulation says you should have a quality management system and it should cover X, Y, and Z. Um, but um, they don't actually make reference to the standard. So ISO 13485 is the standard of choice to demonstrate compliance with that requirement, um, at least in the European regulations. So um, it, um, that, that's one of the things that we need to think about more recently. So for company, companies who've been using it for a long time, they need to, to um, maybe have a look at that addendum from 2021 and make sure they have mapped across ISO 13485 with the exact wording of the regulations. Um, and the trouble is the, the new European reg regulations, um, not so new now, but the MDR and the IVDR, they, they make bullet point requirements um, of what a quality system has to do and be. And there's a few things in there which aren't covered by 13485. So that's the first thing for well-established uh, quality systems. You must make sure that you have written a quality system that meets 13485, but also addresses some of those gaps. So for example, the regulations require that you have a clinical evaluation process. There's nothing specifically in 13485 that says that. So um, that's, that's an additional procedure that's expected uh, now for those regs. And apart from those things, I find um, having been using this standard and it's four, four bears um, for many years now, one of the things that's cropping up again and again is the management of organizational knowledge, um, which isn't a term used in the standard. The standard talks about managing resources, but it's clear that in the development and manufacture of medical devices, one of the key attributes a company has is its competence of its staff. And um, whereas I think not even that many years ago, it was accepted that, you know, you recruit people and then you bring them in and you train them on the quality system, but you kind of rely on the knowledge they brought with them or which their profession uh, makes them competent in um, without thinking or documenting too much more about that. Now, I'm seeing a lot more focus and attention, particularly from the, the conformity assessment bodies um, on that very subject. And so, whereas uh, the standard just requires that you have a system to control the uh, use of external documents, so regulations, standards, guidelines, all that wealth of information that's out there about safety of medical devices, um, now it's becoming more necessary to document how you do that, when you do that, who does that, how often do they review it and revise and assess the impact and so on and so forth. So I would say a, a sort of recent, more recent trend is needing a procedure to control and, or manage the gathering and use of regulatory intelligence. 
So that's something that's not mentioned specifically in the regulations. It's not highlighted, especially in 13485, but it follows on from the thinking and the intentions behind it. Thanks, Anne. And do you have any tips for people who are looking to sort of put a procedure and control in place for, for managing regulatory knowledge? And um, yeah, is there anything you'd, you'd advise them to do? Yeah, sure. I mean, the whole intention of the standard is to provide this framework, this, this kind of platform in the shape of a quality management system. Once you're in the habit of defining, you know, procedures um, that identify who does what, when, how often is it reviewed, who needs to approve, that's a kind of habit that people get into. And the standard provides a kind of minimum level. It doesn't say you should only do these things. It's a way of showing a kind of minimum uh, level of control that is expected to be applied in the development and manufacture of medical devices. So my tip would be just to keep using that format. So anything that crops up that's specific to your industry, your, your type of device or specific to your type of company, um, just use that format over and over and use it to ask those questions. Who's responsible for what? How do they do it? Do they need additional resources? How often do you um, assess that and review it and so on? And a big component that I haven't mentioned in the standard is that the first uh, sort of chapter of clauses, which is um, simply called quality management, is about understanding what you are as a company and adapting you know, reacting to external pressures um, and um, having processes in place that will not only capture that information, uh, you know, gather it in the first place, that, that in itself is a trick that you need to get good at, but then acting on it, you know, what is the impact of a change, whether it's a new regulation, whether it's a new type of technology, whether, I don't know, you decide that all of a sudden you need a a digital system to help you manage the quality system. That's another new sort of trend is people moving across to digital platforms for running their quality systems on. Um, those are very useful and helpful in increasing consistency. So yeah, that was a long winded way of, of giving a tip of keep doing what you're doing and know what you're doing. <laughs> No, that's good. No, thank you very much. Um, I think that's all all the questions I have for today. So thank you very much, Anne, for your time. It's been a pleasure. And um, yeah, thank you for those watching. Thank you for having me.